Welcome to learning about my favorite family tool, Pepper Plate. Pepper Plate is a really incredible tool for managing your recipes, planners, and grocery shopping. And it's really changed a lot of how we eat um, just because of how easy it is to put this kind of stuff together. So once you logged into Pepper Plate, the big thing you want to make sure that you do is that you get this Pepper Plate bookmarklet. Each browser, so if you're on Chrome or Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, has a different way of adding it. But if you click on this button, it's going to tell you exactly what to do. And when you have it, you're probably going to see it up here in your bookmarks bar. I'm using Chrome, um, but in whatever browser you're using, you'll have this place that says Add to Pepper Plate. So then you go out and you start looking for your recipes. And if you're like me, all of the things I find that I love about um, like the, that look really good, tend to come from Pinterest. So uh, you're on Pinterest, you click a pin, and you'll notice most of the time that a pin doesn't have a full recipe um, inside the description. You have to then click again, and so you're gonna open up um, a new window, and we get to um, the actual pin. In this case, it's this chili pot pies with cornbread crust. So I really want to add that to Pepper Plate because I want that to be a recipe that I can then use to add to a planner or grocery list. So I just click Add to Pepper Plate, and this window appears, and the recipe has been successfully added. 90% of the time, if not 95% of the time, Pepper Plate can normally read the web page and easily pull out the data that it needs to then capture that recipe in your list. But there's sometimes, so for example, I went to go to these baked garlic Parmesan zucchini chips. It's that time of year. We've got tons of zucchini. And when it took me to that page, you'll notice when the pepper plate came up, it's actually asking me to import that recipe piece by piece. And it's not, it's not too difficult. You just kind of copy and paste the images into um, the pepper plate box here, and it tells you exactly what to do. I would recommend making sure you grab the website where this is from, just so that if somebody says, oh my gosh, where did these amazing zucchini chips that you made come from? You're not like, well, it was me. Granted, you cooked them, but then you can also point to the actual um, blog or uh, magazine that you took those from. So once you've clicked recipes and you've added those recipes, excuse me, once you've clicked add to pepper plate, you'll notice that it just pops up right here on the top of my recipe list. So I can click on that and it'll open up the list. I can edit it here. So maybe I have um, some allergies in the family and we can't add particular ingredients like eggs and I need to use a substitute. Well, I can go in and edit that right here. So I can take out the ingredients that I possibly can't use um, if there are allergies. On the right hand side, I can favorite this recipe, which is kind of nice if you have recipes that are tried and true that you, you want to keep doing over and over again, we favorite those. Um, I can delete them. I can print it. So um, if you have maybe family coming to visit that don't have pepper plate and they don't want to use that when they're cooking, then you can have the recipe printed. You can share it with other people, which is really fun. Or my favorite, um, I can add it to the planner over here on the right-hand side so I can start planning my meals from here. And I can also add it to the shopping list. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like when I click Add to Shopping List. It pops up and says, hey, do you want to add all of these ingredients? And if I'm at my house, I can quickly go through the pantry and the refrigerator and be like, oh my goodness, we totally have enough flour and sugar, but we don't have any buttermilk. And so I can check off things I don't want to show up in that recipe or I can just click add all of them to the list and it's going to then populate my shopping list. So I can go over here to shopping and I've already added a couple of the recipes just to show what it looks like. And I can see my shopping list is built for me. I can view the shopping list a couple different ways. A lot of times it tries to set it up by aisle and it goes with pretty standardized aisle categories. So produce, baking, that kind of thing. But I can also click view by recipe and I can see the different recipes that I've added to this list. Sometimes I have to go, oh my goodness, we don't have anything for lunch this week or we don't have anything for breakfast. And I can look at it that way. The other way I can build my shopping list is by using the planner. So when I go to the planner, we're not eating any food this week, it's empty. I can go into morning, midday, and evening, and I can type in here, and I can start to bring up, uh, in this case, the chili 
pot and you'll see that the recipe formulates automatically and I can click it and then it'll add it. When I'm done filling out this whole planner, instead of going into each recipe and adding it individually to the list, I can just click add all of Monday to the list and all of Tuesday to the list and it will populate the shopping list. And then on my phone, um, when I'm using this and I have my planner up, I can just click on a recipe and it'll just pop up the recipe and it's ready to go. Your phone has some pretty powerful um, additions to these resources in that your phone also includes a cook now button where you can have multiple timers going for the various things that you're cooking. So if you're cooking a main course and maybe some side dishes and a dessert all at the same time, you can manage all of that from your phone. Super powerful, so much to explore. Um, if you want to dig in even more, let me know. I would love to talk with you personally about it, but welcome to Pepper Blippi.